So this is Montserrat. It's a place of religious pilgrimage. But it also has these really stunning rocks. Making spectacular scenery. So let's take a look at it. From a distance, these rugged, smooth peaks are misleading because they look like towers of granite. But get up in amongst them and things get much more interesting. These landscapes host more than tourists and pilgrims, rare Catalonian ibex. But what are the rocks they're perched on? These aren't granites, they're conglomerates, thick boulder beds, remarkable sedimentary rocks that tell of tectonic instability in the geological past. So let's reconstruct this past together. So some of the glass in here can get really large huge boulders some of them are quite angular others are moderately rounded but some of this stuff can't have come far and been carried by some pretty energetic flows the boulder beds are interlaid with red mudstones siltstones and sandstones and we'll consider these a little later. Let's stay with the conglomerates. So if we can get up close and look at the textures in here, there's all sorts of material, including these brown bits of sandstone, which are ripped up off, obviously, slightly earlier sandstones and incorporated in the conglomerate. It's all quite flattened as well because of the mass of rocks that have been deposited on top. Really nice. So you can really see the textures nicely in this. Some really big boulders, really poorly sorted. And if we're looking closer, we can see the matrix is actually well, all sorts of grain sizes, but nothing much finer than coarse sand. So that's a rapid look at the conglomerate fascies, and they can make some pretty tall cliffs. Very thick units. And it might be tempting to think that these sediments were deposited in a single catastrophic event. Again, let's get in closer. So some really thick conglomerate units. Well, how are we going to interpret them? Why are they so thick? So this is an informative outcrop to show how we get these great thick piles of conglomerate because they're amalgamated and we can see that in here because we've got these grain size breaks preserved where we've got units that grade out into the very coarse sandstone and up more into another unit and if we look up here you can still see a series of these tiered packages of conglomerate grading out to coarse sand in turn but further right on the outcrop we just had the amalgamated coarse conglomeratic units. So amalgamation makes for thick packages of conglomerate. So these sections were built by successive flows, each deposit slightly eroding down into the one below, but locally preserving their red, muddy and sandy tops. Aggradation and amalgamation. Well, the thing about these conglomerates 
is that they're almost entirely made, well, 95% at least, of boulders of limestone. Well, one of the really remarkable things about Montserrat is that it's got caves. You don't normally expect caves in conglomerates, but these are mostly limestone conglomerates. So they behave like limestone and they've got limestone geomorphology, limestone caves. There are guided tours of the caves which are rather remarkable. Rather nice spelithins, stalactites and stalagmites. And the water that delivered the speleothem seems to have flowed along fractures breaking across the host conglomerates. creating local screens of speleothem. So even on the outside of the cave, you can find this, which are laid. It's speleothem. So this is a bit of exposed old cave interior. So these Montserrat limestone conglomerates host cave systems, and we can look now at the geological controls of these caves. This is the trend of bedding, stratification, but running up and down are fracture systems, and these dual features have controlled cave formation, as nicely illustrated in this local explanatory panel. Great science communication. Looking at Google Earth at Montserrat, here are the conglomerates, and these are the fracture systems, and the cave is here. And to outcrop, some of the fractures are filled by sparry calcite. Nice stuff. Rocks, tectonic structures, influencing landscape together. But let's get back to the depositional history, because there's more here than these conglomerates. And the other rocks are important for interpreting the depositional environment. The deeper parts of the succession contain these red sandstones and silts and mudstones, classic continental deposits. And in road sections, these red rocks are interbedded with channelized conglomerates. It's an association of channels cut by energetic rivers and their floodplain deposits, continental rocks. And the succession builds up from here, increasing importance of conglomerate units amalgamated we're essentially getting closer to the source of the sediments as we get into younger overlying rocks. And that's evidence for a prograding fan, probably fed by catastrophic debris flows and then reworked on the fan top and its outskirts by potentially ephemeral rivers and streams. On Google Earth and looking side on, we have a natural cross section through the fan. The conglomerates of the fan are in yellow, tapering out into the former sedimentary basin to the right. And as interpreted in somewhat stretched out fashion by Alessandro Amorosi and Giovanni Sarti a few years ago. We can interpret the system something like this, a fan fed from mountains on one side and building into a sedimentary basin, subsidence creating the space for continued aggradation of the strata, and now preserved in the massif of Montserrat. So 
So the question is, where did all this material come from? It's now time to step back and place the Montserrat fan in its position in northeast Iberia. Gazing off Montserrat, those snowy hills in the distance are the Pyrenees. But they weren't the source of the conglomerates. Here's Montserrat. The Pyrenees are up in the north and it's up against the Catalan coastal ranges separated from the Pyrenees by the Ebro sedimentary basin. The Montserrat fan was fed from the Catalan coastal ranges. We can spin this all around and look at a cross section across the region. The Ebro Basin separating two ranges, Catalan coastal and the Pyrenees. And Montserrat is here. But that's just part of the story. Where are the coastal ranges today? Compared to Montserrat, this is relatively low lying. Coastal Catalonia doesn't look like a great source area. So what's going on? Well, things have changed since the Montserrat fan was deposited in the Eocene around 40 or 50 million years ago. Since then, there's been a spot of tectonics. The eastern side of Iberia and the formal coastal ranges here have been rifted away as the Valencia Trough opened in the Oligocene, leaving Montserrat stranded on the mainland, left high and dry. So after feeding the Montserrat conglomerates, the mountain ranges have been pulled apart. The conglomerates of Montserrat then provide evidence for former landscape processes and of the tectonics that shape this part of Western Europe. There's lots to see here beyond the tourist trails and pilgrimages. Just an hour outside Barcelona. So that's the story of Montserrat.